Greetings in the name of the Most High, Yeshua, the one God of Israel, the Creator, one and all and all in one, who is not separate from us individually. In fact, part of our makeup is the Creator. <clears throat> Something that Christians don't want you to know, but it's because they believe in a duality that there is created and creator, and that the create the creator is not in the created. This is causing people to have to <clears throat> pray out there somewhere for God to hear their prayers when God is not separate from them. It's uh, one of those ironies that uh, you just kind of have to shake your head at and um, realize that the next stage of consciousness is understanding, you know, getting closer to Zion is understanding that God is with us, Emmanuel, but God is in us, John 17. He is not separate from us. When we pray in a sense, because we could only be I am, because there is I am and nothing else. Therefore, in a sense, we pray to ourselves. Um, and I know that sounds really, you know, kind of like what the New Age tries to do, but then there is, but I don't, I don't contradict anything in the word or anything that's been said because John 17 and various other chapters back me up in terms of what it really is. For example, Luke 17, 21, I like these 17 to keep showing up. The kingdom of God is within us. What do you suppose that means? I'll tell you what it means. Let me just cut to the chase so there's no wondering. It means God is in us. Right? Is God separate from his kingdom? Of course not. Therefore, don't look here or there. Don't be religious. Don't look for a sign. You are the sign. You are the beginning, middle, and end. You are me and I am you. You are an expression of my creation, you said because I am and nothing else. And that's the New Jerusalem. And that's what it is. Not a place for humans in these kind of human-esque bodies to go to. Um, the human experience, to, to, to have, I'm sorry, to have a materialistic or external experience in the New Jerusalem. The New Jerusalem, the light comes from you. You are it. It is you. Now, I know that doesn't do us any good. Sometimes it's the wee hours, ladies and gentlemen. I'm having my... Well, it's the wee hours. It's, you know, 4 a.m. or something. And uh, there were other podcasts, but they couldn't go up because I lost my studio this last week. I guess, well, you really probably don't care, but... It's not something you can relate to, is what I mean. Not that you don't care, but I mean about something that I care about. But it's, let's just say that it's something that could be a bit traumatizing, but I've taken it another way, to have it a bit liberating. In other words, I'm down to one, one program with no ability to use gear and uh, I was able to get pretty much just as good a mix as with all the bells and whistles because I was forced to and because of all the frequency training over the past couple of years in uh, dealing with frequencies, which has been my business pretty much, 
I was able to get further down the road even than I had been uh, before in this situation when I had no gear. Don't get me wrong, having external hardware is good because it gets me back to the real, to the analog. Uh, is it necessary? Well, for most people it would be to achieve a certain thing, but for me it's not necessary that I have it to achieve a musical goal, which is a, a new thing, because before it was. Now it no longer is. It can be achieved on a laptop with nothing. But that's only because of the frequency training, of being trained in frequencies and how to deal with them the last two years. So it has liberated me to that, to that level. And uh, the, anyway, this main studio is down, the hardware is down, everything's down. All I've got is I don't have a laptop, I just have a, a desktop that is um, plugged into Reason. Some of you might be familiar with that. And then, but no outboard gear, no separate channels, just Reason in the box, that's all I've got. The same thing as you, you get for 300 bucks and you have on your laptop, that's all I've got. Has no impact whatsoever on the quality of music. <laughs> um, it's good to know that, you know, it's good to know that um, you don't need much of anything. In fact, before that I had bongos and congas. I had a program called Soundforge by Sonic Foundry and I would run uh, my, I had a drum synth external, you know, just a box that you pound on and make sound through an amplifier. And I would make these uh, um, long, how can I say, I would make these uh, uh, pieces with, with just using um, feedback and effects. And I would really grind it. And there were sound engineers in Los Angeles who actually used those in, in some films and were congratulating me on these effects. And, and I didn't even know what I was doing. I, that's how it all began. I was just dealing with frequencies and effects and some just really wild effects, which is, as I look back to those days, all I had was, I had a computer. We had, uh, we didn't have the MP3 back then. And we had a, a, a Roland drum machine, or it well, not a drum machine, it was a drum synth, I guess you would call it. It's an HPD-15, it had 15 pads on it, and you hit them, it's a hand drum, you know. But it would make all these sounds, it had like effects you could do. And I just did those into a microphone and put it all through this uh, sonic foundry and just uh, processed it along with my voice to create a certain urgency, a certain kind of a prophetic tone, if you will. And um, it was amazing how many people I had in, in Los Angeles, back where I escaped from, back in those days, listening just for those. And, and I didn't know really how good I had it, because I know that as you, you, know, as you increase your skills, um, less people are interested in what you do. Be, I think it just has something to do with, um, with the fact that there, people are programmed to... to, to you know, they're, they're programmed away from independent voices and artists and things, and they're, they're programmed to go with the mind control or the, uh, you know, I see so many Christians posting, say, metal that's famous. And I feel, and, I, and yet they talk, you know, like they want to be free from Babylon. And then they're posting and doing the bidding of, you know, the, the, uh, the music scene or the music business, uh, which they've been programmed to do. They've been programmed to like, you know, you, 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 it's, it's interesting. You go to a concert and, and people are programmed to like the approved of Babylon band, you know, um, and all in joining in the mind control. But then they say, well, we're Christians or whatever they say. I'm not really into any one religion, Christianity, whatever, any of the rest of them. Because in Christianity, I don't believe in this external God that's, um, you know, it's not in the Bible, but they say they're Bible-believing. 
and then they start talking about this external God that will hear your prayer when we're not separate from God. And so I, I just always kept asking the question, well, Mr. Preacher Man, why am I praying out there somewhere, there, but God's here? And as a result of that, I was removed from several fellowships uh, because of that very question. It seemed whenever I would bring up Luke 17, 21, or John 17, or anywhere else, or anywhere else, where the Lord clearly has made himself present, you know, in all this, this kind of theater that goes on of, you know, having him here and having him there, we had the burning bush. We, we had the burning bush scenario. We had, uh, all right, Eli. Eli has come in from the cold. It's still cold here. We had the burning bush where God was in the form of a burning bush that, because he couldn't be looked at directly because it was so like a nuclear uh, blast or something, your eyes would be burned out. And uh, then there was the cloud of glory coming down over the temple more than a few times. And there were external embodiments of uh, signs in the sky with the birth of Jesus and various uh, outwardly manifestations of a thing that's going on inwardly, almost as if this life is a metaphor for what's really going on. And of course, as you know, you know, what I've been saying to you these years is, indeed, that's exactly what it is. This life is a symbolic, a symbolism or a metaphor for what is actually going on in this um, consciousness. And this puts me on a pathway, um, expressing these ideas, uh, to this, I don't know, sage people of, uh, from around the world throughout all ages and times who have discovered this very thing that God is not separate from them, but indeed the Creator is in His creation and the creation is in the Creator. In fact, the creation that we see is nothing more than symbolism of the actual experience that we are blocked off from in this kind of prison situation. And how? And I'm going to get to something very interesting because we're kept in this prison situation uh, by the fact that there are uh, there's a whole program going on where you're taken away and the soul is extracted. Now the soul, you know, the, the, the spirit and the soul, the soul um, needs these experiences and so we, we have them these various lives and, and whatnot that we live, and we have them. And uh, the soul learns, and I guess evolves, if, if you will, even though the end game is that the soul knows everything. And then there's the spirit that's, you know, the, the Holy Spirit, the spirit, the spirit of God, the Godhead, whatever it was, it's unchangeable, never changing. And the souls kind of go through their process toward um, you know, ironically, what they already are. And, uh, but there's a soul extraction process whereby one of these other beings is inserted into a person, you know, call, call it possession, or I guess in the day of high technology, there's, it's an alien abduction, but it's the same thing. And one of these beings is inserted in and that soul is taken out and put somewhere else. And this has been the spiritual battle. It's a terrible, terrible battle. You see, the sun is eclipsed by the moon, right? So you have, unfortunately, this whole realm of the occult, which is a real realm of fourth, fifth, sixth dimension, or the second heaven, or whatever you want to call it. And uh, it, the operation is a soul scalp. In other words, a soul growing souls coming into these bodies where these parasites are there to extract them and to insert themselves, if you will, who can appear as alien beings or, 
you know, or sailors or uh, businessmen or whatever, uh, it doesn't matter, to insert themselves into this situation, thus robbing or stealing the actual life experience away, and then living a celebrated life. In other words, they're not losers. They're going to have a celebrated life. But the actual original soul that was in the vessel in the first place is no longer there. Now, that's an actual reality that we face. You know, so we, we dance around that issue thinking that can't happen to us. And um, we, we do everything we can to avoid the issue because we don't want to see that, you know, indeed it's on that level. We, um, we're extremely um, offended at the idea that uh, somebody might, um, that, that there may be a threat so severe uh, that if we don't watch out, we, we uh, you know, will become a victim of it. The, the reliance on God as an external being is okay. I just want to say that that's, that's okay. That's what children need. You know, I, I mean, we sometimes need that father figure there that's going to comfort us, you know, that in, or in the form of Jesus that's going to comfort us. But in the end, what's really going on there is that is within us that's comforting us. And when we are... Um, uh, well, let's just say that when we are, um, yeah, I shouldn't look for that. When we are sorely in need, we need someone external to lift us up, but that's something that our soul needs, so the soul creates it, that idea. And then we, it's easier for us to access the God has, uh, Godhead as an external being who's going to take care of us when that power and the spirit and the glory and the totality is within our consciousness, hence within us. And, um, but, we, we, but that's too hard because it makes us feel like, well, now we're doing all the work. It's within us. It's our responsibility. And then the other, the other aspect is, no, it's, we're praying to some God out there who's not hearing us because we're getting wiped out. We're praying out there to God to protect us, and then he does. We're praying out there for God for provision, and then he doesn't, then he does, then he doesn't. We're praying for Jesus to protect us and using the name Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, as a, um, a weapon against getting possessed when actually it's already pre-written or pre-ordained, the, the, uh, you know, those vessels that will become uh, possessed. What happens, uh, people, is that people get broken down. And, uh, you know, they, uh, they, I think we all collectively realize that, you know, whatever we would think of in the modern era as aliens, which is nothing of the sort, but I mean, we think of them as aliens because that's kind of like fits in with our consciousness today. That's the comic book version. They, um, they are ruling things on the planet, and indeed they are. But what it really is is uh, demonic possession and mind control that takes people over and then rules the planet thusly. God is sitting back hogtied, of all things, in the Christian church and um, hamstrung in some way that he's unable to really get in there and deal with this horrible thing going on, i.e., demon entities taking over these bodies and people and then extracting those souls and inserting their own. Um, uh, or what I used to call when I was uh, younger, when I saw this going on via the, uh, the uh, you know, the, uh, the system, if you will, um, a soul scalping uh, uh, program. You take the one person that, and I saw this happen, well, when I was, I became aware of this when I was about 16. I became aware of so many things. But when I was about 16, I saw them take the soul of a person out. You know, they, they would, you know, I saw that uh, friends of mine were extracted and then another thing, they weren't themselves. And that thing that was in there had supernatural powers and then all of a sudden they rose to great, but they were different. They were, they had no empathy, no morals, no, but they were protected and they had supernatural strength and strengths and, 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 
capabilities and talent suddenly that they didn't have before. And they went from being uncool at school to totally cool and on the in crowd. And they ran, they, you know, took over the planet, you know, en masse. And I'm here to tell that these are the soulless ones, the ones whose souls were extracted. And they were inserted with these, you know, beings that have uh, great, you know, capabilities, if you will. And, um, you know, what, what it is is um, it actually became the modality of birth and creation that these beings, which would be kind of like hybrid beings, I guess you would call them, became the majority of humans upon the earth and would run things and would laugh at others that would, you know, try to resist or try not to be taken over by the body snatchers, which is the movie The Body Snatchers is a metaphor and allegory of this very thing. And it, the hallmark of uh, their consciousness or their, their, the theft that had gone on is the idea of conformity that was central to their uh, consciousness, that people would, you know, sort of mindlessly conform uh, and become even robotic in their routines and in their lives, and that became a civilization. You know, so we're going back through the history. Um, so the human, um, you know, uh, you know, has been studied for many, many years, and um, um, unfortunately, the human has not been allowed to be a human upon the earth. And so God is hamstrung somewhere. Church keeps begging him to help. The situation continues to get worse. More and more people are getting possessed, abducted, whatever. Uh, um, anyway, I've got a little something to read to you that's kind of interesting. And you can take it with a grain of salt, as I have. Um, uh, you know, regarding abduction. Okay, so... This is under the heading, Humans are Very Elaborate Beings. And this is from an article that, uh, you know, it's, it's, I would call it kind of bordering on New Age, but not New Age. It's not, it's not a Christian article at all, but it has some ideas in it that tend to <clears throat> go beyond the uh, average consciousness, which has now gotten to be so boring. And Because, you see, the disconnect from God all occurs because you beg him for stuff, and he's, you know, you're not sure if he's going to protect you. There's not a sureness there. And even people of faith, it's, you know, it's a, it's a toss-up whether or not, you know, you say, Lord, please help me through this, and, you know, the ship might, may sink anyway. Um, that's not very good uh, in terms of an insurance policy. Little do they know that all this was known before they were ever born. But, I mean, they take no responsibility or bear no responsibility in that case. And so, therefore, their death becomes um, somewhat pathetic. So let us look at, you know, so therefore I continue to try to tie in all the concepts of Jesus and teachings and so forth and the Bible in with what really is there. For example, the, the whole thing about the New Jerusalem being um, more of an ultra-dimensional state rather than some kind of place that the humans in the 3D comic book thing will go to and hang out and go, wow, look at all the walls and things of gold and cities of you know, roads of gold and this and that and the measurements and it's floating around. It's, they even get to the point where they say, well, there's a cube floating around in space called the New Jerusalem. It's like, dude, it already says space isn't here anymore. But I guess you missed that, that part. We are taught in our, <clears throat> and I'll read here. We are taught in our elite controlled schools that we are simply made up of a physical body with hormones to control our emotions and a brain to generate thoughts and make decisions. Agreed? If we have a religious mindset, we might add uh, that to uh, this body uh, carries a soul. So many people don't know there's a soul. But if you are of a religious mindset of some sort, you'll think your body carries a soul, that in your body there is a soul. If we are spiritually inclined, we might also add a spirit to the lot. In other words, a body, soul, and spirit. That is <clears throat> as far as most curious people will go. So when a person faces the abduction of an invisible part of her
herself while her physical body remains in bed. She immediately thinks her soul or spirit has been stolen. Well, humans are much, much more complicated than that. The disinformation brought about by religion, ex what have we been talking about for 12 years? The lies of Christianity, right? The deception of the, you know, the, the way, the, say, the Bible is taught. God's out there, right? You're praying, Man, please. Well, it's okay to, well, please help me. It's okay to have that exp when you're afraid, just cry out. You know, I'm, I'm not saying that's wrong. That's like a human instinct. But, uh, I mean, in the, in, when Jesus says the kingdom's within you, I mean, you can't just brush that under, under the rug, right? They did a whole movie about that called Stigmata, um, where that was the main thing the church didn't want you to find out because then you wouldn't need them anymore. Anyway, so the disinformation brought about by religion, then scientific materialism, and lastly, New Age spirituality, there you go, it's all opt into one group, has completely falsified our notion of ourselves. In fact, each one of us is made up of five completely different types of vibrations, each concerning subsets. So this is what this is saying, and this is not necessarily my opinion, but <clears throat> it's a little more accurate than a lot of things you get. Number one is spirit, the supreme being individualized outside of space and time forever the same. Something I just said, along the lines of something that I just said. Soul, that same individualized spirit, but evolving in space-time. Mental body, a mental form constantly changing with multiple words or thoughts. We're just going down the scale here. Vital body, a vital form in continuous relation with the worlds of vital energies and emotions. Five, physical body, a physical form perpetually connected with the material and etheric worlds. So these are the, you know, the, this person's proposing there are five ways of looking at what a, what a human is. And these are just, you know, from, from deeper to shallower aspects, the material realm being the shallowest. There is one unique individual spirit per being, whether rock, plant, animal, alien, entity, or human, anywhere in the universe, is both inside and above each individual. Souls are very different. They are a specialty of Earth, which is the planet focusing on the evolution of souls. Other planets have other purposes. And I, you know, see things, statements like that, I, I would just flag and say, you know, I'm not necessarily um, in agreement with that. But, I, but again, I think you'd agree this is interesting, nonetheless. That is why souls keep coming back here in life after life. Souls are not imprisoned. They plan each new earthly life with an intensity of purpose that we could not imagine, since to us our present life is more like hell than heaven. Certainly we agree with that. And certainly I have also seen <clears throat> how souls return here and even have something to do with uh, what is here and, 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 and planning. You know, it's just all, it's all kind of a mystery, but yes, I, there is some, some truth to this. Who would want to come here with concentration camps, chemtrails, eugenics, mind control, GMOs, and nanotechnology, to name a few? I guess this article is written for the future when there's going to be concentration camps. Really, yet souls do want to incarnate here despite the present situation. It is the very place where they can evolve exactly the way they want. And that I would flag too, you know. And so in other words, I'm not taking all this in as, as any kind of gospel, but I'm just showing you, you know, a, 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 in your knowledge a way to kind of break free of this rut of, of this kind of spin cycle that we're, we, we tend to get caught up in, and then the impotence that follows. The huge majority of people cannot be aware of either soul or spirit, <clears throat> which vibrates too fast for our regular consciousness. To some extent, most know that, uh, that the, their three bodies, mental, vital, and physical, at least the, the more uh, concrete parts of these. However, each body contains numerous egoic personalities that occupy a certain portion of space-time territory. Where do these come from? Every time a fear awakens in me, I automatically create a partially conscious envelope around it. The more often this particular fear comes up, the bigger and more personalized the protected layer gets. So we all suffer from multiple personality disorder. It is just more severe in some than, orders, than others. I find that a very interesting statement. 
we therefore whenever we have a fear of something we create an envelope or whenever we have a uh, a trauma let's say which is also based on a fear we create an envelope so every time we create an envelope that's a different personality I find that to be very interesting so we all suffer from multiple personality disorder it's just more severe in, in some than others most of us actually have hundreds of such personalities but the dominant ones stand out far more than the others when I say I it's only uh, one of the many uh, me that is talking at the moment and temporarily controlling my body I take each one of these personalities to be to be me because they are using the same vehicle to go around the same eyes to see mouth to talk and ears to hear basically my body is a big bus full of different types of people none of them understands the highway code I don't know what they mean by that yet. Uh, the one, uh, the only one who knows how to drive is my soul. It is the uh, patiently, it is patiently sitting in the back of the bus, waiting for one of the drivers, uh, waiting for the driver's seat to be empty. But there is always an egoic personality behind the wheel. Sometimes the bus gets stopped by a highway bandit, an alien, a demon, uh, uh, a jinn, or some other kind of hungry entity. This, in the past, uh, these entities were called hungry ghosts in um, Asian literature and, uh, and elsewhere. This being grabs one of the people in the bus and leaves, uh, called soul abduction here, or gets onto the bus and tries to drive the vehicle in a new direction, demonic possession. However, nobody can abduct the driver's soul because it has free will and is invincible. Yes, I would agree with that wholeheartedly. If the bus crashes, physical death... The driver's soul leaves uh, to rest and plan its new incarnation. I don't know about that, and that, you know that's not part of my... Um, I can't confirm that, so I'm going to always flag these things, but I think this is an interesting flow here. I hope you'll agree without getting legalistic on me. But egoic personalities keep on living for a while still. They all go in different directions. These vib vibrating at the level of subtle physical etheric uh, hang out for a while, but dissolve pretty fast since their energies cannot remain long after the physical vessel has died. The vital egoic personalities go into their corresponding vital, also called emotional or astral worlds, and, and take longer to dissolve. Yeah, I've, I've, I've been um, sensitive enough to, to actually see those, those states and those places like the astral realm, unfortunately, I, will, I might add. The mental egoic personalities leave for the mental worlds and take even longer to disappear. Yep. These false parts of me think they are me, but they are simply partially conscious bundles of crystallized energy. If they are not fed on a regular basis, <clears throat> they eventually stop existing. But this may take years, sometimes hundreds of years, if they are good at vampirizing humans or other entities from their own worlds. In, in subtle wor worlds, the war for energy is on 24-7. But the notion of space-time differs from one world to the next. Meanwhile, my soul is still alive and well. It is, only, uh, it is the only immortal part of me in th the game of space-time. Remember that my spirit is outside space-time. Right. Uh, my multiple egoic personalities remain perpetually connected to their corresponding universal worlds, which are swarming with forces and entities. Our bodies are basically public squares, where beings, forces, passions, desires, emotions, thoughts, and ideas pour in and out. There is not much there that I can truthfully call me. Even the cells of my physical body keep being replaced every day. So what part of me can I call I, my soul? Let's make things clear. A soul is a soul is a soul. There are no captive souls, damned souls, lost souls, fallen souls, redeemed souls, and so on. This describes the state of vital and mental, mental egoic personalities that have left the physical body after death and continue living in their corresponding vibrational worlds. According to the belief systems of these egoic personalities, they can create their own hell, purgatory, heaven, at least for a while. They may get stuck there for various lengths of time and are often used by aliens or demons for a variety of purposes, food source, usable container to inhabit the... Uh, in order to perform certain tasks, etc. Eventually, but this may take hundreds, even thousands of years of time, these egoic personalities figure out that they can accept dissolution. They agree to die and somehow their energies join with the Supreme, capital S, but this, I guess that's the Creator. 
But that, that is not a real person dying. It is temporary, partially conscious bundle of energy that continues to think it is called Mrs. Smith or Mr. Jones. The real soul is something totally different. It is the supreme being, individualized and evolving in space-time. I don't, I don't know about... I think they mean soul is evolving. Um, but it, it's... But there's... The, you know, and this, I'll flag that, and we'll just go on. We're, you know, you're going to have to, you know, sort of cherry-pick these. Its evolution can only take place on Earth, which is the planet uh, that has been designed to house this very particular type of divine experience. A crucial part of the evolution starts when it incarnates into a human body for the first time, because this type of vehicle carries a more advanced mind than that of animals. The soul now has access to an advanced mind. It just went from a Volkswagen, uh, dolphin, elephant, monkey, or cat, to a Lamborghini, human, and now rides a vehicle with a free will indeed. Human bodies are the only ones with the ability to go against nature. Like other animal and biologist alien species, they do not have to blindly obey a diva, the ruling god of a species. That particularly has proven to be a curse and a blessing. When a physical body dies, its subtle uh, body, physical body component dies off in about seven days. The many personalities out of the vital body take various times according to many different factors. Mental personalities last longer, but eventually dissolve also. Meanwhile, the soul takes a separate road after the physical body dies. We cannot see it leave the body because its vibrations are much too fast. It simply re retires in its own world of, of perfect truth and bliss. Well, that's a contradiction there because there's no, no evolution if it's perfect truth, right? It's already evolved. So that, I, I told you, this is not, you know, this is not gospel truth here, but this, these are just some ideas that some of, some of which are quite profound and others are um, not, not worked out yet. They need to evolve. Its evolution stops for a while until it is ready to come back into a new earthbound human body. So that's kind of where it goes in the new age and, you know, where I would disagree because I consider the soul to be uh, perfect. And uh, when, I, when I said the word evolving before I read this, what I meant by evolving is I meant learning, you know, learning, but then I, but then I also preface this by saying, but it, already, it, it learns what it already knows, in a sense. And then that's at the behest of the creator, which is creating because he's the creator. So therefore, the experience, will, and I'll just leave it off right there. I'm not going to really source this. I just wanted you to have some ideas out there in space. Um, they go on to try to delineate um, uh, there's some interesting thing about aliens and, and that's what drew me to the article because of the alien abduction is increasing upon the planet and the soul possession is so thick now I mean I go into town I don't really see people that are um, I don't see many people that you know they're, they're completely unconscious and taken over and controlled so I'm like, well, the, we've already seen Armageddon here. I mean, there's no, unless something drastic happens in the next couple of years, um, there won't be any souls left. They'll be uh, put in little boxes somewhere. Many abductees, and I'm going to drop down to this part. Many abductees describe their captors as small gray aliens with two large black eyes. These are actually cloned organic robots used as avatars. We've said the same thing here, but from a different perspective. For other interdimensional aliens falling into numerous categories, tall grays, reptilians, mantids, snakes, Nordics, and many more. Some of these small grays are made in secret laboratories inside DUMS, deep underground military bases, which should actually be called DUM, DUMABs, deep underground military alien bases, since aliens are deeply involved in running the show. That's the other thing you have to understand. The military-industrial complex is completely run by them, 100%. All these politicians, the Obamas and all that, they all work for those. And those run the show in the White House. I mean, that's, they run the show in all the institutions. We've already covered that. Abductees have described many types of aliens. However, there, are, there is no way of knowing who these are. One, clones from dumb abs, or you know, underground base, alien uh, human bases, Inhabitants of a deep cave systems, inner earth dwellers, Agartha hollow earth theory, beings from secret bases on the moon, Venus, Mars, Saturn, and other planets of our solar system, beings from other star system or galaxies, 
beings from parallel dimensions, beings from the past or the future, the choice is yours. See, that's the thing I like about this article. It's got some chutzpah there. But never take their word for granted, since many, if not most, are shapeshifters and inveterate, inveterate liars who know more about human psychology than the best uh, psychologist and car salesman. Most aliens cannot endure the extremely dense frequency of Earth, so they have to use avatars to go around. Find that profound? These could be one. I know there's one friend in particular I hope is really listening to this because this is a lot of stuff you want to know, right? Maybe I'll forward this article to you. These can be, one, artificial life forms, small grays, two, clones of real aliens that have been genetically modified to endure the Earth's environment, three, human-alien hybrids or hubrids, four, possessed human clones, five, microchipped humans, six, mind control humans, seven, possessed humans, eight, any combination of these. Therefore, you can no longer think that an alien automatically comes from another planet, nor can you be sure that a regular-looking human is not a hybrid or a person controlled by an alien, demonic entity, or something even weirder. Huh? How's that jiving? Yeah? <clears throat> now, I'm sure you want me to go on, don't you? In a world of lies, even the most inspiring human guru, a beautiful angel, wise ascended master, or beautiful or gentle alien, can hide the most wicked, deceitful, lustful, treacherous demon. I will be able to tell the difference if I am blinded by these false beliefs and desperately looking for a savior. Worse still, abductees, taken away without their consent, and contactees, taken willingly, have alien experiences that uh, often turn out to be non-physical and mixed with mind control. Many are being fed a false alien scenario, which is downloaded directly into the brain, and they remember uh, interacting with aliens, but these could simply be military personnel or demons of the vital worlds taking a special shape and saying the lies uh, best, uh, best to suit their purpose. Demons are extremely skillful at using bodies as avatars since they cannot manifest physically. They have the choice of inhabiting humans, hybrids, aliens, clones of all types, uh, biorobots, animals, plants, magical objects, etc., these, uh, this works best above cosmotelluric power places, stargates, especially where sacred geometry increases the power of manifestation. Cathedrals, castles, standing stones, pyramids, crop circles, etc. The whole phenomenon of alien life is riddled with misconceptions, disinformation, and out-and-out -out lies. And the human mind is so limited that there is no way that we can actually really understand what is going on. One thing is for sure. If you see an alien and it tells you it comes from another planet or galaxy, your best bet is to assume that it is lying. Uh, that's a 100% accurate statement. And very helpful to us right now. Since you're about to become aware of just how vast this problem is. Very quickly, like maybe even today. As for their crafts, this is what I really like. Most physical UFOs are man-made, man and the human elite owns technology that is thousands of years in advance of what is officially disclosed. Thousands of years. Not hundreds, not fifty. Thousands. Thank you. Thank you for what I already knew that. But I just love hearing someone else say the same thing I know. You know, there's like a confirmation. As sci-fi author Arthur C. Clarke wrote, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Absolutely. Also, another person that said the very same thing. Uh, actually, Arthur C. Clarke here is quoting Carl Jung in saying that, because that's, that's where that idea originated, before Arthur Clarke said it. But uh, I'm not going to quibble. I mean, I used to be quite liter literate, you know. <laughs> I'd like to go back to reading books and get away from computers, actually. Playing, you know, playing a piano and you know, reading books and having candles. Anyway, sorry for my digression. Here we go. Those UFOs that are not man-made are much more ethereal than we can imagine. Such UFOs can shapeshift into whatever form is needed for the purpose at hand. A hot air balloon, a flying saucer, a cloud, an airplane, bird, angel, dragon, and chemtrails. Yep, you, you, you heard it. 
all humans are hybrids. Now, now there's a picture in this article of uh, Beyonce shape shifting, her teeth go growing pointed and her eyes going black and so forth. That that you've seen, I'm sure, online already. What do Obama and Beyonce have in common? See, I just see. I love how this flows just into something we can relate to. It's not like from 1953, you know. Um, they are probably hybrids, human alien hybrids. Actually, all humans are hybrids since Homo sapiens was modified many times in the past by aliens and their masters <clears throat> to suit their purpose. And and I'm this is also borne out by some Christian leaders such as um, uh, Hogard and you know Jonathan Clack and, and some other people that have talked about this uh, humans being made into fit extensions for the use by the demonic, you know, and, and through genetic modification. And I absolutely uh, believe that's true. Um, actually, all humans are hybrids since Homo sapiens was modified many times in the past. And then you have to ask yourself, well, why would God allow that? And the, the answer is because there's no harm, really, ultimately, to the soul, is there? This is all just a, a game of energy, in a sense, and it's all a dance. You know, but you have to step into another dimension to kind of see it that way and not personalize it so much as being such a heinous crime of theft. Okay? But but we'll get to that. I mean, calm down. Calm. This is breaking your paradigm. That's just not true, Z. God didn't charge. He's sovereign over everything, and he's in charge. Everything's cool. Then I ask you, well, then how are you grokking if God's in charge of everything, how things are going? I mean, does, does your thinking process allow you to just have a, have a, a gap like that? And then, and then that would build resentment, I would think, and, and a lack of faith, ultimately. A lack of hope, because you're saying God's in charge of everything, yet you are, you're suffering in a, almost hell yourself. So how do you, well, we're here to suffer. Yeah, you're here to suffer, but you're here, I would think, to understand, not simply to blindly say, I'm suffering, so that's good. And God's sovereign in control, and He only gives out good and love and all that, and everything's fine. Now, I understand what, you know, but but just, are you satisfied with being in your position of mindless suffering and mindlessness? Did not God give you a brain, man? Okay. I'm not here to argue with you. I'm just I'm I'm not I'm just here on my own exploration. I, you know, you can hang around if you want. I'm not a preacher or a minister to you. I'm simply on my own journey, okay? And it takes form of a podcast. And if this is tuning in, you know, um please I'm I'm not going to preach unless it has something to do with, you know, that if you cause an effect where if you do a bad thing, bad thing ha you know, but other than that I'm not If you go with the satanic, yeah, if you willingly give yourself to that it won't be you that enjoys your winnings. It'll be somebody else, and you will be put in a box somewhere in prison. And that's, I do preach about that simply to try to help people avoid that mistake because that's a, that's a killer. That can be thousands of years of, well, or just an in, in infinity of, of hell, you know. Anyway, but not forever and ever necessarily. But, I, you know, it's, 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 we're, we're trying to get our way through this thing. Um, okay, to suit their purpose. So that explains the various races of the planet. Oh, oh, okay, let's just go back here. Actually, all humans are hybrid since Homo sapiens was modified many times in the past by aliens and their masters to suit their purpose, which explains why there are various races because of genetic modification. Um, Obama, Beyonce, and the most famous and powerful are uh, improved hybrids that are more possessable, thus easily controlled by their owners. So these are great fit extensions, and they manifest supernatural capabilities. Their abnormally large vital bodies allow them to be charismatic, Pope Francis, and to perform occult tricks like Chris Angel. Contactees, I love how he you know, brings in Chris Angel. Contactees, abductees, and my labs are often such hybrids, and most of them have psychic powers that are put in the service of their masters, absolutely. Whether, I've been in the presence of them, and they're quite powerful. Whether the being possessed a, a, a hybrid or is an alien or a demon makes no difference. The problem is that we keep bowing down to them and offering them our vital energy in various forms. Awe, admiration, lust, jealousy, envy, anger, hate, obedience, I hate that one, reverence, etc. 
There is no reason for them to stop this power game since we give them all the power they crave. And this is where the article is poignantly true and sad. If we want things to change, we will have to change ourselves. We cannot count on the lies and deceptions of aliens and their demonic buddies. The problem is that we do not, we do not know who we really are. We consider ourselves lesser than aliens and invisible entities. Nothing could be further from the truth. It is time that we acknowledge our true identity. Aliens and demons live in a world of illusion. Many researchers in the field claim that the aliens, demons, or ADs, let's link them together as um, they work uh, as partners, have been running the show for millions of Earth years. <laughs> Amen. That's absolutely 100% true. Both on our planet and elsewhere in the universe. I don't know about that one. Because I, that's not something I can go measure right now. They call the highest level of control of the, of the Demiurge, a form coined by Plato and later adopted by Gnostics. Others in this top honcho, uh, Lucifer, or the great architect. Christians call it God and Muslims, Allah, and it is the God in charge of the mental, vital, and physical worlds that are in relation to the planet Earth. I like to call that the God of illusion. So this person is clearly saying that the, the presented God of the Bible, which is not the the, the, I don't believe in the God the church has put out there. We're not in the same, is, is the God of illusion. In other words, that this world is it, that the New Jerusalem is this external thing. You know what I mean? It's the God of the materialistic lie. And I would say that, and that's their deepest knowledge of, of such things. And, and I would agree on that, on that basis that that's really true. Um, I would also call it the, the impotent, God of impotence, because that God is, you know, you beg to that God and, and, uh, but you still conform and bow down to the aliens and demons who are running the show. And so that becomes your consciousness. That becomes your prison. That becomes your bed that you sleep in. Uh, obviously, that's, that's, that's not acceptable, right? That's why you're tuning in here. That's why we're doing this. As we saw earlier, a human being living on Earth owns a very special soul that grows from one incarnation to the next and a special body that's able to host the soul. I'm, I'm not in agreement with that completely, uh, and it's, it's just much more profound than that, much deeper than that. That's a, that's, this person's now falling into the comic book problem. There have been so many combinations, and, and, but I mean, you know, I'm getting, you know, 50, 60 percent of this anyway is, is, is hitting on some truth, and you know, it's, it's more accurate than most people. It just it falls into some, some cliches that are you know, part of the mind control, but, but, you know, this person's earnest in trying to break free of that mind control, which, you know, we know is, you know, Yeshua, the way, the truth, and the life. We, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break that down in a minute. Just hold on. There have been so many con combinations and, and alterations in the earthbound human body in the past millennia that it can no longer be ruled by a single diva, god of a species. Thus, a human being only has one real boss, its soul, the supreme being individualized in space-time. In other words, this goes back to what I was saying that, that uh, John 17, that God, it, we are one in him, he is one in us as one. So the individual and the supreme being are indeed one, okay? Uh, the supreme being, okay, that means that the unlimited, omnipotent, uh, omniscient creator of the whole universe, say we're postulating the creator here, the differentiating it from the God of religion, right? The unlimited, omnipotent, omniscient creator of the whole universe lies hidden inside humans in an individualized format. I couldn't have said it better. It can tell each person what to do and creates for each one exactly what is needed to advance its agenda, both on an individual and universal basis. Realize that humans are individual creators, not because they have an advanced mind, but because they have an advanced soul. On the other hand, most ADs, alien demons, have much more powerful minds than humans, and they have access to subtle worlds. They can read what some call Akashic Records, where everything that has happened since the inception of the universe is stored, including the all possible past, presents, and futures. Therefore, ADs can easily get information, but they are limited to their own level of consciousness. They can only decipher deformed versions of the truth. Unlike humans, they do not have access to advanced souls, so they are stuck in the illusion. They need to feed themselves often on us, and they eventually die, 
even if some live for thousands, even millions of years, and with death comes fear, hierarchy, war, lies, and deceit. Humans are not victims. With such powerful souls, humans are not the victims of aliens and demons. They are creators and willing participants in a cosmic experiment. The latter is taking place only on Earth, but its repercussions affect the whole universe. Astronomically speaking, our planet may appear as a small piece of cosmic dust floating around in countless galaxies, a tiny grain of sand like a, a Bahamian beach. However, on a spiritual level, Earth is the concentrated symbol of the universe. It is much easier to work on one point than work in diluted immensity. For the facility and the necessity of the work, the whole universe has been concentrated and symbolically condensed into a grain of sand called Earth. Wow, that's pretty cool. Souls have agreed upon the... People wonder why, why it's all happening here on Earth. Christians have wondered why the, the whole of reality seems to be concentrated here on Earth. Right? I wonder if it's spread throughout the... It's not spread anywhere. It's, it's all happening right here. This is the main event. Absolutely. We all agree. Souls have agreed upon the procedure of this special experiment on Earth. To our souls, the present earthly scenario is going... According to expectations, whatever the elite does, whatever laws it passes on compulsory schooling, smart meters or vaccinations, despite the number of concentration camps it builds, and children it rapes, kills and eats in satanic ceremonies. I love how they throw that in. Despite GMOs, chemtrails, harp, nanotechnology, it follows the supreme being's plan, no matter what the plan is of anyone else. The creator's plan is the supreme law of the land, and that's what will be done as earth and as it is in heaven. Amen. Okay? So here's where we're lining up, and I think this is pretty cool. There is really nothing to worry about, yet there is something we must do. We must change ourselves. We are not and have never been and will never be victims. We are creators. Well, absolutely. You know, the Lord made us in his image. He's creator. We're creators. We, I think we'd all agree that humans create. It's our nature to create. It's, it's, it's our... It's our, it's our food to create. It's our therapy. It's our, it's, our, it's our function to create. And then it goes on, um, you know, it goes on talking about the video game and the illusion. So I am never a victim. I am both creator and the player of the game soul. So I'm, I'm both the creator, the spirit, and the creator and the player of the game, the soul. Yet I act as if I'm strictly the avatar or the external body in the game, and I am terrified of dying. However, as a soul I am immortal and as a spirit I am timeless. Whatever happens in the game allows my soul to grow in consciousness and enlarge its soul body, and for a soul the game can be a lot of fun. My soul lives in bliss at all times, whether it is in the body or in between bodies. Ego, the temporary cluster of personalities attached to my uh, present avatar body, is the one who follows the WSAD program, work, suffer, age, and die. So when I experience fear of any type of fear, I could automatically conclude that I am identifying with ego and not the soul. And it goes on. I think you would agree with me, and I'm going to stop there. I think you would agree with me uh, <clears throat> that the article, for whatever reason, tends to have summed up the concerns of uh, most of you listeners and um, attempts to confirm a lot of things that have been said here that, uh, that you know, I'm always, you know, a few years ahead. So um, in things, it seems like, you know, where I have, uh, you know, some peers would question and say that, you know, that's satanic or that's this or that. And uh, then eventually that, then it would come into more common knowledge. And as it's so interesting that so many uh, people from the, uh, uh, with faith in Jesus Christ and so forth, uh, have looked into aliens and demons and other worlds and the military industrial complex and all this stuff. Why would the Christian then be obsessed with all this stuff? Uh, the end times prophecies, uh, the way that God's plan is unfolding, and it is, and it will not be trumped by aliens or demons. How the, the military industrial complex is at the behest, in, in other words, they're not in bed with aliens and demons. The aliens and demons run them. And, um, you know, they are possessed and uh, manipulated so that, you know, implied in the article is that the, the highest people in our society, the um, 
entertainers, politicians, and so forth, are the most possessible, the most useful as extensions of the alien demon um, entities, and that's and and are 100% possessed and 100% uh, being controlled, and they control all the institutions, of course. But I've seen this firsthand, have and you have as well. So. The good news, I think, is the news we already knew from John 17, and that is, uh, I am one with the Father, the Father is one in me, you know, the, the Father and Son are one, the Father and Son are in me, I am in the Father and Son as one, period. Therefore, I have, um, I have all the access to all of that. I am indeed part of, not external from the Creator's plan, I am the Creator's plan, and I am the Creator on some level. But I'm individualized and as an individual soul, my avatar is my idea of who I am, my, my, you know, my presence upon the earth, but that's not really who I am. Uh, the multiple personalities that everyone has are based on all kinds of envelopes of fear and different things that people create in order to um, continue you know, surviving at, in this density, which they don't need because and it was already implied in, in this article. See, I, my belief about the soul is that the soul is, is just like, a, a, kind of almost like a concentrated form of God. And, it, and it's God's individuation process of his creation. And souls are part of his creation. But souls know, I mean, but he is as much soul and spirit as anything else. So that God is not separate from the creation. So that um, just like whatever your definition of spirit and soul is, you realize that that's God in me. That's God in you. The kingdom is within me, in other words. That's confirming uh, that notion. Since the kingdom is within me, I am no victim at all. I'm simply a, I'm a co-creator with God, but I'm a, a, a creator on, at the behest of God, if you will. Everything I create is going to be God-ordained. And, and there's nothing I do that isn't, you know, that, that, you know, whatever happens in this game of this video game we're in right here, I am still perfected. I am bliss. There is no evolution, really. I don't believe, okay? This person kind of believes in the evolution of the soul. I don't, all right? I'm just going to tell you my opinion, and it's just an opinion. Uh, I don't believe the soul evolves. I think we are in this video game, if you will, at, because it's God's will that we are. You know, that it, In other words, it's our will that we are, because my will is the same as God's will, so it's my will that I'm here. Okay, so I volunteered this. So I'm actually um, part responsible for all the things you see. If I want a different result, I must change my consciousness and then different events will occur. And indeed, you'll have the plane crashes into the mountain, one. Another one, it lands safely. One, there's a nuclear war. One, there's, you know, whatever. But it doesn't matter. Whatever the scenario, but, but see, there's no onus on that. Whatever the whatever the thing that happens doesn't really matter because ultimately I'm perfected anyway. So I am perfect now. Having this imperfect experience, so perceived, but not really imperfect because it's just part of a game, a plan where I, I said it was a joke at one point. But it's really just a, a created situation so that souls can go through an experience of, I believe, learning and this kind of... Uh, um, knowledge or evolving to then to where they already were if you will so they already have the knowledge but then they lose it and then they gain it again in this kind of passion play this kind of dance of the universe that god does in order to affect his will which is to reveal himself maximally as the supreme creator as as born of love and goodness and all those things which could not be done without this duality of light and dark and without this um creation and without this New Jerusalem, which is his creation of humans, actually, that come to know him. And that's, real, you know, and, and then that's the completion or the, quote, New Jerusalem, which is simply the, um, a metaphor, if you will, a comic bookish sort of metaphor, naming all these different, you know, um, elements and, 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 and uh, minerals and rubies and, you know, these various jasper, you know, whatever, all these kind of um, stones and things to describe this beautiful jewel in space, which is devoid, which is beyond the realm of physics and space-time, which is a metaphor of the soul in the first place. It's almost like, you know, 
um, it is a uh, uh, it's like a returning the completion of which is a jewel right the New Jerusalem would be a jewel because that's what you know humans thought that's the highest thing is a jewel so it's a jewel hanging in space but re- but there is no space at that point so the light emanates from there so the physics of it is that it is light as we are light as, and there's nothing but light so how do you describe that because there's no contrast so the soul's journey is to, is is really it could almost be explained by this there's a huge separation or a, okay a big bang and all these elements go all over the place and all this creation happens i mean it's much more it's it's a controlled thing but i mean i'm just saying and then it comes back to itself in other words it comes it forgets everything and then slowly evolves in the knowledge as it comes back to a, a solid point, which is, you know, um, a metaphor, still a metaphor, and still not really the real reality, but, but a metaphor that's workable so we can understand that our knowledge of Creator is already perfect and we are coming into that knowledge and evolving toward it, but I don't believe in this idea of having... You know, I know that all things are known. I don't necessarily want to call them the Akashic Records because that's like a new age term. The other thing is um, souls having, you know, millions of incarnations to learn what they need to learn in order to... It's, it's, that's not the way I look at it. I look at us being on... You know, again, I disagree with that because I've... You know, that was like my experience at the Bodhi Tree in 1982. You know what I mean? Uh, that's a bookstore in L.A. on Melrose Avenue uh, in West Hollywood, which... Um, I used to visit a lot along to with the Vedanta Center and and I went everywhere in, in religion, philosophy, anywhere I could go I went to figure it out. But there's this notion that all these souls are having these experiences to, you know, come back to the center to have to, to perfect themselves and become one with the absolute. Eventually the same goal of the kind of a new Jerusalem experience, which is never broken down from this cube in space, which is obviously a metaphor, right? So all of the churches teach it as literal reality because they're stuck. You know, they're run by demons and aliens, if you will. And so the people are stuck in this kind of comic book world of buying the gross physical reality of everything as being the reality. And that's the first mistake the churches make. They can't go beyond that. So therefore, the people can't go beyond that. So they remain um, kind of stuck. And then, you know, people fall away and you know, the community gets goes worse and the totalitarians get more power. They say, what's well, God's will that you suffer? And that's just not good enough because the suffering has to be an agreed upon suffering. You know, I, I don't necessarily agree that I have to suffer. I don't agree that you have to suffer. I don't agree with that. I don't agree that you have to have a world that just goes to nuclear World War Three and you're just a victim of it and that's it and you have nothing to say about it. I don't agree with that. I'm not going to accept that. I want to not accept the Catholic Church because they're based on lies. I don't accept any of the Christian churches because they're all based on lies. So the God of that, of those worlds, is the God of illusion. I agree with that article. My God is, you know, not stuck in religion at all. Um, but as you gain the knowledge, isn't it true and as you evolve and, and you gain more wisdom, isn't it true that you're simply just gaining that which you already had and you remember that you had it but lost it and now you found it again? It's not really what's going on here. And haven't, haven't you been created over and over again in various forms? But it's all about, you know, honoring the creator by... It's really... The whole thing to me is just a journey back home. It's all contained in, in, the, in the Garden of Eden story. You know, it's all contained in the Garden of Eden through Revelation story, if you take those two and put them together. You know, there was a way that was lost, and there must be a way back to the garden, let's say, to the, good, you know, to the, to the perfect knowledge, to the perfect stasis, because the, the, the Garden of Eden story is a metaphor. It's not literal. You know, people that take it literally are, in my view, um, stunted mentally and emotionally and on and 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 their lives are ruled by fear of looking at what's there rather they want to look they want to let themselves be imposed upon by the leaders to not look beyond a certain thing 
meaning in the Garden of Eden, there's just an Adam and an Eve, and then all the generations flow from that. First man and first woman. They, they believe it. I mean, it's, it's pretty elaborate. And then there's all the generations mentioned after that and, you know, who came and what the fathers were. And, you know, there was a lot of effort put into a, a, a lineage, a genetic lineage from the garden on to prove that it all um, happened from the first man, first woman. I, I'm, you know, I um, simply need to point to the idea that God's walking around the garden saying, Adam, where are you? You know, and, uh, you know, it all seems to me to be a teaching lesson as far as the, the, the lineage is concerned, it's also in the book of Matthew. Um, there's a lineage there to prove Jesus came from this certain line from the beginning on to prove that his pedigree. I find that to be um, useless to me. So, you know, those people that get into it, I think there's probably a deeper significance of it. But they're trying to keep the father to the father to the father to the father, you know, the creator to the to the the first man, Adam, and then and then create a lineage that leads back to the creator, Yahweh, that, you know, but if we only stayed in his will and we were only good and followed his commandments, we would have uh, reached the promised land by now. But since we are not good, we need a savior, and then that savior will save us so that we will be good. But then when we have the savior, we don't change. We're still bad. And in fact, use him for a covering so we can do even more bad. And uh, so the whole thing has gotten twisted, perverted, and, and obviously doesn't work. The way that the Christian orientation failed. I didn't say Jesus failed. I didn't say Yahweh failed. I didn't say the Supreme Being didn't fail. I didn't say the Creator failed. I just said the religion failed. Whether it's Catholic, Protestant, it doesn't matter. It failed already. Uh, Islam failed. Buddhism failed. Um, you know, Taoism failed. Uh, you know, the Sikhs failed. They all failed. Everyone failed because they bought the the lie that the uh, illusion, which is this world, is uh, this the external avatar, which is the way you're presented to the world, is is real, rather than the perfect you that it you know right? Because within you, the, the, never anywhere in the Bible, for example, does it say the soul. There's something wrong with your soul. Nowhere does it say the soul has the problem of the flesh. Nowhere will you find that because it's not true. It is not true. You are, uh, in a sense, responsible somewhat for your misery because somehow you've chosen to be miserable. And so you are. I choose to be happy if I have a choice, and I do, and I'm not a victim. I choose uh to really be positive you know to put forth positive energy rather than any kind because of, there's nothing here worth getting upset about there's nothing upon the earth worth getting uh twisted up about not even the abortions and the rituals and the possessions and all this stuff most people are demonically possessed okay most ev everybody without exception is multiple person i've never really met anyone that i got to know closely that i didn't see multiples in and that goes for some of you who feel like you're intact and you're, you're not multiple. I've seen it in you too. I've seen it in every virtual human being that I have ever met. I've seen multiplicity. Everywhere, every single human, I've seen multiplicity. I have never seen non-multiplicity ever. Ever. And I've never seen, um, you know, the, 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 the powers that be be anything but possessed. Or rather taken over, even to the point of being, we talked about this, about soul scalping, which I became aware of when I was 16. I saw them doing that to the kids. And um, it, it, for some reason, it wouldn't happen with me, so they went, they tried to get rid of me. But they failed. But it's because I was not um, possessible, I guess. I mean, I, I guess I'd like to be possessed, you know, and sometimes I'd like a vacation, you know, but... Um, Sure, I'd be possessed by a really powerful entity who's totally successful and and have some kind of uh, success on the earth or whatever and in this game show that's meaningless and doesn't matter to anybody and it's got nothing to do with me because I'm already perfect and already accomplished 
and already um, have achieved everything that could be possibly achieved. Nothing more for me to do. But yes, to have this in a, in a real-time experience, in an illusion, uh, under, under a false god, under a false hope, under a false situation, where my avatar gets accolades, it's not even me, it's the avatar. And, and, the, and furthermore, it's not me even conscious of it because I've been replaced by some demonic entity who's taken the avatar over, and he's getting all the credit. Uh, what good would that do me? You see how my thought process goes? So when I think that way, which is the truth, then obviously it takes the motivation away for any kind of worldly um, whatever. A five minute pat on the back. The truth is, if you want to break it all down, man, the truth is, uh, we have painted ourselves as victims people coming from a Christian background. Now, I don't have a Christian background. I have a, more of a Hindu and Buddhist background. You know, that was my first real orientation to um, religion, was Hinduism and Buddhism. So I don't have a, um, I mean, I had an early time where I used to go, the, my parents would drop me off at church and my brother at, uh, you know, at Sunday school. So we did have that, but then as soon as I was maybe 12, I got out of there, you know. I mean, it's, it wasn't anything that took hold. We didn't take it seriously. But when I ran into uh, Eastern religions, Buddhism, uh, even Confucianism, Taoism especially, uh, Zen, um, I got really inspired you know, by all that. And then, of course, it took a number of years before I found out it was all fake as well. You know, It was all basically the same stuff as Western religion, just a little more exotic and interesting because it's not my uh, uh, you know, Western upbringing, if you will. And um, a lot of it rang true to me, you know, just like a lot of the Western religion of duality rings true, the monism of Hinduism rang even more true. Um, the asceticism, the monism, the, uh, uh, the mon which also carried through into Buddhism, which is basically Hinduism uh, uh, with a teacher. You know, it's actually an extension of Hinduism, Buddhism. It's a, it's a subsect of uh, Hinduism, actually, if you really want to. Uh, but but it doesn't matter what it is, you know what I mean? It failed. <laughs> but that was my main, I'd say, my as a teenager and growing old, that was like kind of, you know, and I, I was, you know, I understood there was a lot of uh, lessons in Buddhism, for example, but I found the burden of the Dharma just to be too, too strict on people. There was just too much bad karma put on people from... Uh, you know, for example, um, you're having a lousy life, uh, and this person's kind of a Buddhist in their idea, ideology. It's really your fault. See, we can go from, there are no victims here, to you're responsible for what you get. So if you're getting a lousy life, it's your fault. Um, you need to straighten up your uh, dharma, karma, and all that, so that you will have a good result. So a good cause equals a good effect. So it's very much based on cause and effect, and it doesn't work one-to-one. -one. So that's why it's, it, it finally got to um, where it had to develop from Hinayana Buddhism, which was the, the, the strict Buddhism I'm talking about, and eventually became uh, Mahayana Buddhism, because Mahayana, or the Great Wide Path, which of course leads to destruction, says anything goes. Okay, so basically, you can pray to your old gods, just call them new Buddha gods. So we, whatever kind of form your religion takes, go ahead, we'll put, we'll put it all, all under the political roof of Mahayana Buddhism, which then makes Buddhism a joke, totally. Um, and eventually, it kind of became systematized in Japan with this big revolution of Zen, which was a cultural revolution, actually, of affecting clothing, behavior, architecture, um, you know, poetry, ink, uh, martial arts, uh, every, you name it, Zen did it. And, uh, and so it's very beautiful in that way, you know, because Zen has some profoundly marvelous teachings that people, frankly, here in the West need to learn. For example, we don't perfect a thing, ever. It's a big thing in Zen. Um, when you have a bowl that's almost perfect, you might put a little ruffle in it or something if you're a potter. Make sure it's not perfect. Okay, and for those of you mixing music, hint, hint, um, 
you know, you don't perfect a song, you know. If it's getting too perfect, you leave a little something in it, a, a little, not an error, but you leave something of a, of a human flaw in it to, um, to, to, so people can relate to it. Otherwise, it's going to be like machine music or elevator music. The people won't relate to it, understand? That's why I said as your skills improve in music, that you, 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 you may have less people interested because that, you know, what they want is they want blood on the page. They want, they want to feel something real. And the more highly produced you get, the, uh, the less they can relate. It just becomes like package music that you have with a TV show or a, you know, a greeting card or you know, an elevator or background music at the pool or whatever. And they, they don't care about it. They just, they like it. It's there, you know, but it's really not, you know, not something uh, real going on in front of you. Oh, well, gosh, we've really covered a lot here this morning. And I, you know, I suppose I should um, get more sleep. I don't know that it was so important to bring this to you, but I just really believe that if we don't get out of this victim mentality, if we don't understand that your soul and your spirit, you know, which is, it's basically God in you, okay, is stronger. You know, he that's in you is stronger than he that's in the world. <clears throat> now, I'm not talking about the people that say, hail Jesus and don't mean it. And then they tout all those scriptures and they, they you know, but it's like, well, First, you have to have faith, man. You know, in other words, you can't be tied to the, you can't bow down to the, to the AD, the demons and aliens, because you have faith, right? But in bowing down, you show you have no faith, so you have no Jesus. So he that is in you is weaker than he that is in the world. Amen. But that's by your own choice. Because you gave your power, remember this part, we as a globe give our power to the demonic, to the aliens and demons, the AD. We give our power to the demonic realm, to the satanic realm. We give our power to it, or it wouldn't have any power. Then we act like victims. And now when I look at, I was talking to this guy, this, this, this guy, he's a citizen here, but he came from Mexico and he became a U.S. citizen. It cost, cost him like $14,000 in, in 10 years of his life before he became a citizen. I think that's terrible, by the way. I think, if, you know, a lot of these uh, Mexicans, you know, there's families are all split, you know, between Mexico and here. They need to just have some way of becoming a citizen. You sign a paper, whatever. You go to work, you pay your taxes, and then get rid of the undesirables, you know, criminals, you know, cartel people, and, you know, figure it out. But uh, these, these disgusting idiots won't do it. Republicans, Democrats, you, you name it, they've all bowed down to the AD. They're all completely possessed, save for one or two here or there that, that have a pretty strong faith. If you believe that an external God will save you, you're, it's a lie. There is no external savior. Okay? Proven by John 17. It's, it's scriptural. Uh, proven by Jesus' own words. It's within you. I don't know what more to tell you than that. You know, I, I take these lessons. To, do you not read what's in the Bible? Because I actually take the Bible seriously. When it says something like that, I take it to the bank. Funny how my brothers and sisters out there who are lost avoid such scriptures because it's just too problematic to think about. You know, they have to see themselves as victims begging God to save them. Now, I'm not going to be totally down on them because that is a beginning of an awakening of consciousness. But at some point, you've got to step into it. You know, At some point, you've got to realize that I and the Father are one. At some point, you've got to put yourself as we are more than we are joint heirs in Christ. At some point, you're going to have to make, understand that that's you today. You're eternal today. You're in total bliss today. You're in the kingdom of heaven today. You don't need to be raptured. You're already there. There's no need to be a celebrity. You're already there. The celebrity is just an avatar. It's a celebration of an avatar which isn't even real. In order to then mind control you, so you bow down, giving your power over to this thing that is um, you know, simply going to eat you alive. And you know, you'll be miserable and crying all the way to your death. 
than saying praise Jesus all the way. And there's just something wrong with that picture. I'm here to tell you. If that's your life, then it's time for a change up. You know, what if you knew that you were in charge? What if you knew that you were stronger than um, all the a aliens and demons that want to possess you, take you over, eat you, destroy you, put you in a war, traumatize you, and make you a multiple personality and, 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 and make you a bitch? How would you like to know that, you, that they're your bitch? That, you know, there's nothing here except for you playing your part in the play of submitting yourself to it bowing yourself down to it giving up your power is the only way they can they can then lord it over you if you give it to them if you don't give it to them they can't do it not an ego trip a fact a fact celebration is what needs to happen here the ego is another problem you know the ego is if you feel fear it's your ego and it's that's not the holy spirit that's not the lord that's your ego Be still and know that I am God, right? Well, I hope that didn't throw you through for a loop, you know, reading from a... a um, let's see if I've got some big text here. I've done all this, by the way, with an Apogee mic. And a... Um, huh, what do you know? I just happened to turn to this. I and them and thou and me, that they may be made perfect in one... John seventeen twenty three. Uh, all being done with an I, iPod Touch and an Apogee mic. That's the studio. Phenomenal. I and them and thou and me, thou Lord God, supreme being, creator in me. I am in them, there in me. Ye, thou are in me, that they may be perf made perfect in one. So I and the Father are perfect as one I am perfected today and yesterday and tomorrow I am that I am and I am the new Jerusalem today I am here because I have somehow um, maybe not in my memory but I'm somehow you know responsible too for this it's not like it just happened to me and I'm a victim uh, but with my knowledge of John 17, of the kingdom within, of the teachings of Jesus, of the reality of the situation, of the, of the, of the name Yahweh, the I am, of the nature of angels and demons, of the fact that I am, I don't know if the angel is perfect, but I'm perfect, uh, the, the fact that I've, I'm going through a flesh experience as an avatar that I must have, the Bible says I must divorce myself from. I must not give worship to the ego or the avatar. I must put it down because it's not real. But it's what, it's the only thing that can ground me here. But then within me is a fit extension through genetic manipulation. It's, it's an imperfect vessel. But I that inhabit the vessel am perfect at the soul level. Now, I don't believe, and you know, this person divides it between soul and spirit. I'll just say that which is me in this, who is aware of, of my father and I are one, basically God in me then. I and God is one. Therefore, there is no real me separate, separate. I think with that knowledge, then there's nothing more really I can know because there's no higher I can go than, than I already am. Now, if I could really take hold of that all day long and not let people knock, knock me out, then I am, you know, whatever I do, whatever form I take, uh, it has got nothing to do with making me feel bad, making me feel good, whether I'm getting older, whether I'm getting fatter, whether I'm getting stupider. It, none of, it's all irrelevant because I'm already perfect and unchangeable as, as it is as me. What, whether my avatar goes through, I'm, that's got nothing to do with me. That's allowing me to have this experience here. Because it's something that I, as a soul, maybe that's true that I feel I need that, if nothing else, to awaken me back to further awakening states, which brings me back to where I was anyway in the Creator, the Creator in me as one, and, and there's no division or separation. But 
I'm also here to be an individual soul, separated, you know, briefly from the Creator in, in, a, in a kind of an illusory knowledge, but really no separation. But for the purpose of this division, light versus dark, then which manifests the Creator all the more, he could not reveal himself and receive love had he not created all this, which is, I think, the primary motivation is Creator's motivation, which is also my motivation not some other motivation of an ego or a created personality or multiple personalities or whatever they are out there. So I think, you know, some of what, what I read, you know, was kind of interesting in the sense that it, um, you can put it through the lens of scripture and through the lens of your own uh, understanding. And I think you'll have to agree with me uh, that there is no reason for the Christian to be a victim. In fact, that would be a sin against creator, against the whole religion, in a sense. You know, the, the response to having the knowledge that I have right now should be joy and a lightness of being. Though if it's too light, of course, it's not, it can't handle being here because this is a very dense experience. And not, not every kind of thing that's out there can be here. For example, aliens and you know demons cannot be here. They have to possess people in order to be here. And it's a very special being that can actually withstand this. The density and the intensity of light and dark, it would rip most beings apart. The idea that it's all concentrated in a single point in space, Earth, makes total sense to me. I mean, there's a lot of good things in the, in the article that kind of confirm stuff that you get from another perspective. But another pers all these roads, by the way, lead to Rome. In other words, all of this knowledge leads to the same point no matter where you came from, whatever religious background. Christians are too much didactic and well, I did this and I had Bible study. It's, it's irrelevant. All the knowledge goes beyond the Bible. It all leads to the same knowledge worldwide. It all leads to the same place worldwide. But if there's nothing you take away from this podcast, it's one thing. You gang, you people that say you're TIs, you're not TIs. Uh, they can target you all day long. You are above them. You know, you're having the experience. I've gone through it. Um, then, then I don't go through it because I don't, I don't really believe in it. So I don't go through it. But I've, I've been through it. It was amazing what I've been through. Um with the organized stalking. Amazing how many people I knew were involved in it. And they had to do it. I asked one they had to do it because if they didn't, they get in trouble. That's a part they don't tell you, isn't it? And it is all very coordinated, but then all of a sudden it was just not relevant in my life anymore, so it disappeared. There was a Dr. John Hall who said it never disappears. And I'm like, yeah, it disappeared. Because the whole point of being this TI is to feel bad that you're being harassed. In other words, to feel it. If you're not feeling it, then there's something's wrong somewhere. You know, it's, it's, maybe it's that I don't care. Maybe it's that uh, I, I laugh uh, hysterically when I see, you know, something going on like that. I just think it's hilarious. I think it's amazing that these little people with their little stupid ideas think that they can alter the course of history or something with their little petty concerns and their little stupid children and their stupid little houses, their dumb little routines, that somehow if they get on the dark side and do this organized stalking, that they will somehow wind up in a place in heaven or something. I'm amazed at that. And we've, we've seen it. I've, look, I'm watching it. I'm watching it go on right now. I'm watching, I've, you've got, you know, it's a circus. The Christian online thing is a circus of idiots is what it really is, of absolute morons. If you want to know my opinion of Christians online, for the most part, not, you know, friends I have and people that are, you know, we converse with, and I've got some really bright people, brighter than me, you know, that I talked to and one I spoke to yesterday, um, where I'm wondering if I'm up to it, you know, intellectually, because you know, part of me just wants to like float down river and not do too much thinking anymore, because <laughs> I figured it all out. You know, I've seen the top of the mountain with, with God. I've seen the promised land with God. I am in the promised land with God. 
I'm, I'm having a temporary experience here, and I, I just I just got to do my best. When I blink, it goes bad, right? When I believe in it, when when my ego gets afraid, when I get afraid of something, when there's uh, multiple personalities setting up uh, because I have to create little altars so they can uh, get through. Um, when it's uh, I have to have my creator externalized so I can beg somebody for a favor because I'm scared like a little child. Sure, it can go sideways like that. And I have not, there's nothing wrong with you talking to the Lord as your father that's outside of you. You know, it's a very childlike thing to do. And it's understandable when we get scared. But for gosh sakes, folks, every day, all day long, you know, when the Lord is waiting for you to come into the, uh, to the kingdom, to come into the knowledge, to come into, you know, to, to come into your own kind of perfection, to your own state of, of joy and peace, and you stay not at peace. The fact that, hallelujah, this creator has woken you up and saved you and now you're delivered. Hallelujah, you can live forth now, delivered and happy and positive because you're because you've got all things all the knowledge you have because the holy spirit is in you of course it never really left you it's really like an awakening because god's not separate from his creation period so according to god he's not separate from his creation so if i'm right on any of these points then obviously say i'm right on 80 percent of them well, obviously, then, if that's true, then the duty of every Christian is to leave the church because it's filled with lies and deceit and run by aliens and demons. It would, because since it's a lie, it must be. And since it victimizes all the people that become members and puts them in an infantile state where they never question anything and they just go along with external papa out there as modulated through the pulpit, creating this, this uh, slaves and masters um, conformity which is identical to the world then the bible says you'll know them by their fruits well if, if those fruits that i, I see uh, are equal nuclear armageddon so those wouldn't be the fruits that i would consider to be worthy of the lord or worthy of somebody that's a bible believing christian or one that believes in yahweh or jesus and the bible i would consider that kind of victim mentality a, a travesty and a complete mishandling of the word of God and an abrogation of the pulpit and the worst possible crime against God that could be possible by organized religion in the form of avatar Christianity, which is an avatar, as well as Buddhism and you know all the other isms out there. They're all avatars too. Same with communism, republicanism, uh, expressionism, thisism, that. It doesn't matter what it is, they're all avatars. They're all things of a thing, okay? They're all kind of watered down, removed from the original thing itself. So, bottom line, God is not mocked. He has no respect to persons. If you're having a miserable time because you've externalized, you, you, because you believe the avatar is, is king, and you've externalized God, and so that has created misery in your life, um, God is not mocked. You'll reap what you sow, and you're doing something very bad right there. But also, uh, God has no respect to a person. He's not going to honor it. He's not going to give you joy when you give him sorrow. Since he's in you, you're giving it to yourself. Since you're worshiping the creator rather than the creator by believing your avatar is actually central or believing your, your various whims and notions and things are your personality when the person of you is really you, you know, beyond your physical outward manifestation or avatar that is shown to the world that it can exist in this space-time continuum for a very temporary time. But the fact that you believe it's permanent will, and that it's real, your avatar, in other words, what the world sees, since that's what you believe is real, then you will be miserable. And the Lord's not going to be a respecter of your delusion. He will give you misery. Because you've given it to yourself. You've created it for yourself. And um, they tried to promote, like, being in sorrow and being in agony. 
being bummed out basically your whole life and disappointed is um, Christ-like. How could Christ be bummed out? Was well, so he's a man of sorrow? Sorrow because of um, the delusion of man, sure, but it, it's ignorance that Jesus was most sorrowful about because the people could have it all and yet they put themselves in prison. That's what he was sorrowful about. And that's certainly something to be sorrowful about, the point being that Christ is light. And that, you know, the people of earth are darkness. And the few that run the place have usurped the power from the people who are superior to them, as you are, as I am, totally superior to them, to all of them put together, are nothing compared to me. Isn't that something? Uh, when it says being joint heirs in Christ, it doesn't mean down the road at some point after you're dead. It means beginning right now. Now that you've woken up. It's really a journey of awakening. Okay, so I don't really, I'm not into the World War III uh, nuclear thing, so I'm going to turn it off. And I absolutely can say that. Because my reality has got nothing to do with you. My world has got nothing to do with your earth and my earth are two different things. But that's another chapter. That's another story. That's more about, you know, empowerment. In other words, you know, you're empowered to have the life you want. I am convinced that this is not permanent and I don't intend to stay here permanently. But I do intend, while I'm here, to, to f look through all this to the truth. Now... The reason people bow down to the AD, as it called, I like it, alien and demon, because it's the aliens and demons that run the show here on Earth, is they, you know, can't really make a living, they think, without that. So that's really why they do it. But when they do it, they're, they, you know, the, something is taken away from them and a control mechanism is put in, if you like, soul exchange or scalping or some, some kind of concept like that. I've seen it happen across the board. And then I've actually seen the people that enslave themselves and give their power over, which is what I'm talking about, then mock the people who are free or not part of their system, which is death and victimhood, and then laugh at others who aren't part of it, almost in some kind of a, like demons laughing at humans because, don't you see the joke, folks? Here's the guy that's superior and needs nothing from us. He empowers us, the demons. We take over the earth, and then he has to bow down to us to get employment when he already has the power. But because of fear, MPD, weakness, you know, all these things, he forgets who he is, we take over, and we win. when in actuality, in the long run, they lose. Because demons, you know, and all that are not meant to go on. And I, that's another thing I liked. Um, they wonder, well, are demons eternal? No, they're not. Every tear is dried. You remember uh, when you were finally delivered all the way and you're in that state of uh, being, which is not this earth, it's not even this physical realm. Uh, every tear is dried. There are no memories at that point. It's just now, 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 now. There are no devils and there's no deception and there's no game and none of it. So, oh yes, the warnings. Unless you're a better person, you're going to go to hell. None of us is any good in the, in the flesh. If we're measuring our fleshly stuff, flesh is not, it's, it's not good in the comparison to that. It's, it tries to convince you that you're a separate I and that you need to bow down in order to have your goodies. And that, that's your avatar doing that. That's your ego doing that. That's your fear doing that. That's your multiple personality. That's your insanity. When you actually come fully equipped to uh, you know, crush the world if you want. But if you can be convinced otherwise, you see, it's one big mass of mind control. And also, you know, in your favor, you know, you didn't want to be manipulated genetically so that you'd be compliant. You know, there's a lot of stuff that... You know, it's not just so easy to say, well, you're this superior being and you decide to come here and then make yourself inferior, then complain about being lorded over upon 
uh, when you had the power at all times to put an end to it, you know, why would you do that? It's your fault. You know, how many times has the way been pointed out to you and yet you've stayed in your prison cell? How many times has the door been opened to your locked cell and you go, I'm free in Christ, but you won't leave the prison cell? That's almost a cliche out there. Well, with that, I'm not going to go on any further. Well, my hope is this, that whatever happened here today would just bust you loose so you can just understand you're, you're not a victim. God is not separate from the creation. You don't beg a guy way out there somewhere to hear you. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. It's, it's, it's within you. It is accessible. Your life is changeable just by changing your thoughts. You're powerful. You have more power than all the demons and all the angels and all the, um, you know, aliens and all the everything put together because you have God in you, which is, uh, you would agree with me, more powerful than them. You're experiencing this individual separation for a time, but the remembrance brings you back to the source, which is obviously him. And if that's your source, if that's what's in you, then your avatar, your outwardly expression is not you, but rather um, a projection of you. The real you has all the power to thwart all this uh, within yourself anytime you decide. Haven't you ever had it that the demons are all over you and everyone's turning into a devil and they're all around you and you just want to go to bed and you wake up the next day and it's like it's all gone and the same people that you're around, that it's gone from them too? Why do you think that is? Why didn't it just continue? Now that's a very common experience. That happens, may I say, 100% of the time for all people. I'm going to say it. That's a wild thing to say. I'm going to say it. 100% of the time, the next morning, they're gone. Now, that doesn't mean by they don't come back that afternoon around cocktail hour. I'm just saying it, they're gone. It's like it never happened. You think you're in a different world. It's like that across the board. You're going to court. You don't, they have the evidence stacked against you, and the judge releases the case. You, you know, on and on and on and on like that. You know, it was all going against to the next morning, the next day, something shifted. You're a different world where everything went the right way and then went the wrong way again, which was cosmic and impossible. Then it went the right way, which was impossible to get out of it. But, you know, it, it, it's just reality is not a perfect cause and effect yoke of slavery for you that's hard and like hard labor in a prison camp. Miraculous things happen. Anomalous things happen every day. Whatever it is now, wait five minutes, it won't be the same thing. Whatever they say about you, wait five minutes, they won't say the same thing. Whether they're all coming at you, they're all demon possessed, they're all gang stalking you, they're all doing all this stuff to you. The next day it's like, where'd it go? You wonder where it is. Eventually it comes back again, but because you're not gonna you haven't changed your consciousness yet. You haven't understood who you really are, so therefore it's gonna come back. To remind you of hello, wake up call. You can you can you can put all these people in a little box and make it all go away. And with that, I bid you shalom, shalom. God bless each and every one.